This week on the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. So, sometimes your opponent rolls eight dice on Z6, and, <laughs> and deployment doesn't matter. Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a podcast focused on tactics and competitive play for Star Wars Legion. Hosted by Kyle Dornboss, Michael Barry, and David Zelenka, with Jay Shalansky, the man behind the glass. Hello, and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels. I'm Kyle. I'm here with Mike and David. How you guys doing? Good. That was like a 50%, right? I feel like <laughs> it, it like you could tell you were trying hard, you know. Yeah, the ice skating judges are like, you know, 7, you know, 7.1, <laughs> you like, know. Sort of stuck the landing, but not really. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm just going for like a little wobble. <laughs> I'm just going for 51%. It's okay. like preponderance of the evidence. It doesn't need to be beyond a reasonable doubt here. So Simple majority, simple majority. Yeah, there you go. Um all right. Uh, so, how are you guys doing? Good. Uh, I, I yeah. Guess, you know. Good, I guess. Yeah. I'm not doing great today, specifically, but my week has been pretty all right. So. Okay. Well, that's good. It's Thanksgiving week. Um, we're all going to be stuffing ourselves full of delicious food later this week. Excited about that. <clears throat> um, so we got a lot of talk stuff to talk about today. We actually have some highly relevant news as well as a new unit preview which is our 2d2 and 3p O, which we will talk about um we got some updates on release schedule and uh we're gonna talk about count dooku today which we said we'd do last time and um we're also gonna do a little brief invader update and david's gonna talk briefly about a tournament a prime that you attended this weekend so let's uh let's hit the news Welcome to In the News. All right, so first and foremost, we got a little update uh, via Discord from FFG Marketing. Um, basically, everything's delayed. <laughs> so everything that was due in December, which is um, which they had originally announced for December, uh, which was the upgrade packs for the core units, um, Operative Luke and Vader and R2-D2 and 3PO has all probably been delayed till January. Uh, they're unsure on Luke and Vader. Um, they're doing the old hold for a global release um, thing on that one. But the other stuff, R2 and the upgrade packs are definitely delayed until at least January. Smooth. Yeah, I mean, this is. I think this is why you don't announce release dates. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's the option to, to flex on them later. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, because shit happens. I mean, um, you know, I used to play uh, 40k, uh, recovering 40k player, and as crappy as that game is, the game itself is compared to Legion. GW at least has its logistics down, and that like they don't even announce the existence of products until they're less than a month out from release. I mean, it's, um, is it unless it's old, they have when they give you together? three years of lead time, like the it, it's that they at least present the present the illusion that they have their shit together because by the time it's announced, it's going to be in your hands a week to two weeks later. Right, like, that's what I mean. Like you know, they're they're kind of hedging against not having their shit together by having their at least like marketing shit together. Yeah, I think FFG's kind of dug themselves into a hole sort of in that we kind of expect things to be announced like six months ahead of time and uh, i don't know um i think that uh, that well yeah like if, is tough. If, right like if ffg wanted to start doing that we'd get like no new unit previews for the next six months basically right so like what does the marketing guy do at that point yeah right <laughs> <laughs> um, um yeah so it's you know it is what it is it's um this actually has important so this is a, a competitive focus podcast this has important uh implications for lvo potentially right i was just gonna say our primary issue with it is that um there's rules surrounding unit legality because you have to be um released 11 days prior to a tournament at least so you know if they pushed it to january are they going to meet that 11 day deadline for LVO is a real question. Yep. I, I mean, I think that right now we have to bank on the answer to that question being no. Um, 
I'm feeling the same because there's no, I mean, given the history, right, usually it comes third week of the month, third or fourth week. So knowing that LVO is fourth week, 11 days, I mean, the math just doesn't, it just doesn't math out, right? Yeah. No, they might. It's possible they break that schedule in so far as we're talking about what, like, like four or five different products. Uh, right. You know, you've got four upgrade packs. You have uh, Luke and Vader and you have R2 and 3PO. So I can't imagine them dropping all of that stuff on one Friday, but who knows? I well, guess. It's also important that this now overlaps like the tank release, right? Like I, I think the tanks were supposed to be in January. Um, uh, February, okay, I think. February, but tanks, like, yeah. does this push that release back? And if so, you know, it's very possible we're not going to have um, new factions armor available for Adepticon. You know, um, right? Yeah, because Adepticon is, um, you know, it's the last weekend in March. So if they don't hit that eleven-day window in March, which is essentially what happened to like Chronic and Death Troopers yep. last year, Chronic and Death Troopers were the, um, sorry, this year, twenty nineteen, were the March release, but they weren't. They didn't make the cutoff. So yeah, I, I mean, that could easily happen with the tanks if the tanks get I mean, pushed too. But we're speculating. It was just such point. an advantage for the rebels to have Jin and Pathfinders. <laughs> hey you know what i use pathfinders I I <laughs> oh no i did too i, I, with pathfinders. I did not <laughs> i was taking um, a cheap shot all right that, that unit yeah, man I know. Like, uh... hey they were good for I about still, two weeks. i still stand by that um, good. It, um i think it's uh, also a decent conversation to have now that the operatives are like being pushed back like what is their technical release because their unit cards are in the wild now right they're they're prime rewards prime championship rewards so there are people including i think possibly you david that have mm -hmm. do you have luke's uh unit cards and command cards yep i have i even have the luke spot gloss so i have the full ability to come to a store and play six luke right now when I'm using six Luke as a shorthand to say a list with all six of Luke's command cards and I could play him as either or, and I'd be totally cool with it. Yeah, I don't know if my it, opponent would be, it's certainly not legal for tournament cause he's not released. So well, and that's, that's worth, a bummer, man. And that is worth explicitly calling out because I'm sure that there will be people that are just not aware of the unit legality rules that try and bring their Luke or Vader command cards to an official event, whether that's a prime or LEO or whatever and um at least as far as we know those those are not legal yet because the unit that they belong to has not been released yet so right it's it's only available to this group of people who who finish top 16 at a prime right because that's it's the only way you have them now right it's it's no different really than like uh you know the clone wars corset and the dewbacks got a gen con release so people had dewbacks and clone wars yeah. corsets but they weren't legal until the general release is it's concerned. just confusing so. and muddy and it's very yeah for sure um the other thing that's confusing um relevant to primes is that primes are at least according to uh ffg's legality page are cl classified as premier events which is different than rpqs were so even though it's effectively the same thing uh, the unit legality rules are different so um rpqs were formal events which means that if it's released it's legal um primes are premier events which means that uh, it has to be released 11 days before the tournament. So keep that in mind if you're showing up to That's a prime. A uh, yeah, and I mean, that news comes too late to one of our players. Um, he brought Rex, Oof. and this prime was day 10 after Rex was released. Oof. And so he missed the cutoff by one day, and I feel like at that point I would have just let it go and said, look, um, who's counting? It's 24 hours. Yeah, but I mean, again, like it, it was one player at a small event. And so it didn't it wasn't really like going to impact the whole event to have this thing, this thing available. Like, I don't think anyone was, you know, anyone was actually counting the um, days. I don't really think that was handle? happening. I, I think oh. they told him no. Yeah, I, I really I wasn't privy to all that because I didn't I didn't hear the end result of what happened. But I don't remember seeing that player at the tables oh. afterward. 
Yeah. So oh, I like think he didn't switch his list. He just didn't. Yeah, play. I think they may have dropped. I think he may have dropped. Yeah. Wow. That's a bummer. Yeah, that is a huge bummer. So yeah, heads up, people. I mean, it's. I guess if we're not getting any releases for two months, it'll not be an issue here pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Well, heads up, heads up, tos as well. Um, it might be worth telling people, you know, hey, this is Premiere. These are the rules for yeah, Premiere. If, um, yep. if you're gonna bring a list, you know, don't waste your don't waste your travel time and your money coming down here. You know, that's just a big bummer because I know that this fo- this fellow was traveling from a fair distance, and so that's that's a bummer, right? You know, travel costs their travel cost tournaments are are a huge reality, even if you're, you know, just going two hours away, you know, to some place. It's a huge time investment, you, like like screw the money. Yeah, like, time investment yeah. in California, gasoline is majorly expensive. You know, it's taxed heavily here, so that's just reality for us. Um, so yeah, I mean, TOs just need to be aware and players need to be aware and everybody just needs to be aware. <laughs> yep. Heads up, heads up that, people. Yeah. And that change was, it, it was just like sudden. And I mean, the whole con like almost, there was a lot of conversation that day. Just like, why the hell did we change the naming? Why the hell did we change the status? And, and why is this premiere? Because it's a store level event. It makes sense for it to be formal. Yep. I mean, I don't know. Um, the swag is definitely better than the RPQ swag was. Oh, undoubtedly. I mean, I'll miss the I'll miss the giant chunk of the acrylic, but um, it, you know, you're right. The swag is better. Like I have a I have a spot gloss card. Like that's crazy good. Yeah, spot gloss, I, Luke, right? Yeah, a spot jealous. gloss. It double sided operative Luke Vader. Yeah, and then I had then I saw the top four people get their um, uh, what was it the the operative Luke token sets. And I think they're getting better at cutting them because <laughs> they, they seem to be less um, off center. Off, off center. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's still, I think it's still a crap shoot, um, but they seem, they seem to be, they seem to be nailing it. The more they do it, you know, they're, they're improving with practice. So that's yeah, good news. The Sabine graffiti ones were not terrible. Yeah. I mean, I have a, I have one egregious example in the set that I traded for, but yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So that is a release slash prime news. Um, we did get a unit preview, although it looks like now we'll have to wait a bit for R2 and 3PO. Why? (laughs) I hate it. Ah, it's like teasing us, especially because his, uh, the, the three pip and the two pip they showed seem to be, well, for lack of a better word, fire. (laughs) Because <laughs> one of them literally is. Do you so. want to talk? Do you want to talk? So we 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 already knew about his one pip, um, which basically gives him jump and speed two. It's like a dive for the end zone kind of a card. Well, well um, the two pip appears to be a flamethrower. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you want to talk about it? Uh, not not any more than I want to talk about the three pip because the three pip is I is think nuts. This is only good card, <laughs> especially. Yeah, I'm starting to feel that way too. The more I look at it, because the that that one that two dice flamethrower is like a white dice flamethrower or something. It's very situational to me because like, when is R two gonna be close to a unit large enough to actually the use that against when he's dead? It's... Yeah, when he's probably already dead. <laughs> yeah, you don't um, you don't want him in range range one of something that you're gonna use that on. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only situation where you'd want that would be if he was suppressed and you had a unit directly behind him, because then you get the inconspicuous benefits. Yeah. Right. Because he can't be legally attacked, but even then, like, you can just go into melee to get around it. And I didn't see whether I didn't see whether the that flamethrower was a melee flamethrower like the Boba Flamer. I think it is. I didn't see the symbols. They're 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 covered up. I think by the no they they had the. They had the actual card in the article. Oh, they did? Okay, well, the one I saw, the art that I saw was covered still. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess while we're doing that, we can confirm that in a minute. Um, I got to say this 3-pip smokescreen, holy moly, is it good. Um, So, you know how Rebels have no time for Sorrows when you play Leia? I mean, it's basically no time for Sorrows all over again. R two R two issues an order to himself and a trooper unit, and when he issue, when R two issues the orders, 
those units can do free free speed one moves. But if you put a relay on R2-D2, R2-D2 can issue his own order to a different unit. And so you basically have no time for sorrows all over again. It's just a little bit slower. And you've got the smoke drop that R2-D2 can do as part of the as part of the card. And I think it's a free action yes. to drop the smoke mm -hmm. as well. Yep, it so is. Um, you've got... You've got so much synergy there with Tauntauns. Unfortunately, the uplink tech that was working with No Time for Sorrows with Tauntauns doesn't work here because R2-D2 has yeah. to issue the order. Correct. Yeah. It's not when a unit receives an order, which is why uplink was so strong with No Time. But still, the Tauntauns get the Agile, they get the repo, they get all the stuff they get off the moves, except for attacking, because it's not a move action. It's a speed one move, so Relentless doesn't trigger. But I gotta say, you know, if you needed to push something up the board to charge, you are you're just golden, and it's a three pip, so it's like I don't really care about priority because I'm just pushing this unit up the board. Well, I think it's you're just you're in heaven, man. It's also a good like a runaway peekaboo card, um, which is one right. of my favorite uses of no time for sorrows, and especially so because it's a three pip. Um, so like duck back into cover or behind line of sight blocking kind of situation. Right, so now I can do it twice and potentially have cover in addition because of R2 dropping smoke. Yep. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. It's I think this is easily his... Um, I actually think Blast Off is pretty good if you're running him with Leia Tauntauns because you don't have any... I mean, you could take Ambush, I guess, um, which is important for Tauntauns, but, uh, you know, diving for that end zone, at least in a list like that's pretty important with R2. So I could see taking blasts off in a list like that. But yeah, I think this is certainly going to be his most universally taken card. It's good in a Tauntaun list. I think it's good if you're running him with either version of Luke. Um, so. Yeah, and anything that passes a free move to a, a powerful unit, especially a powerful melee unit, I mean, that's just that's money in the bank, man. And especially in lists where you don't have heavy competition for the three pip slot, like save our skins, like you can take it or leave it. Yep. Like you probably you probably don't care about that, so yeah. And if you're running, so, I mean, uh, sorry, I was thinking Leia R two and Sabine comes to mind because Sabine you just run Legacy of Mandalore and then you just drop save our skins yep. for smoke screen. Yep, agreed. Um, it's hot, man. It's it, really good. It is. Did we did ever discover it's, whether Mo was melee? It's, it's amazing. Yeah, yep, they got the so R two Flamer there. is melee. That's so good. Ah. I mean, so if you ever you ever try to trap this droid in melee, like prepare to I mean, die. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, <sighs> yeah, I guess it's if if I'm meleeing R two with something, it's usually something like Luke and flamethrowers. I mean, he's just gonna die. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fair. I could see like if you're trying to, um, you know, prevent him from getting into your zone, and you want to tie him up in melee. I could see a use for that, but like blast off also has disengage on it, so. It seems almost as good in that it kind seems of situation. Much better, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's much better because it's like I don't even have to bother with you. I can just walk out of melee with you. Yep. Yeah. I, the issue I have with blast uh, off is that um, it's such a high priority effect, um, and I really feel like if you're trying to get R two in the end zone, a lot of the time you want to be going last. Yeah, I mean, it does give him a suppression token, which helps with inconspicuous. Yeah. But um, obviously, he can still get scoped if you don't have other units up there with him, either by range or line it's of sight. It's a lot so. easier to scope something that's in your own deployment zone, generally. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. like, um... I did that on Friday. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, uh, I agree. I think... I mean, just like anything else, it's hard to... It depends on what you're running, right? Like, if you're running triple Tauntauns and you have them all up there with R2, it's not going to be as difficult to set up. Um, and he's only 35 points, so, you know, it shouldn't be a free victory point. Yeah, but, like, but... I feel like Blast Off is a card that you want if R2 is, like, doing other things all game. He doesn't really do other things all game in the Taunt list. He just moves across the board for six turns. Yeah, I think it's good in situations where, like, 
if there's a line of sight blocker kind of on the edge of your opponent's deployment zone and you want to just park him there and wait until the last turn and then jump over it. I think it's definitely better for the jump and the disengage than for oh, the speed for sure. two in most for circumstances. Sure. I just, I don't know. I feel like if you're playing triple tauntauns, you really want ambush because if your tauntauns break down, you're in a, you're in a, you're in a bad spot. Yep, that's very true. And especially like if, you, if you're if you not running ambush after you've played coordinated bombardment, you know, and your opponent knows that you can't give a one pit board to your tauntauns, yeah. that's an issue. Yeah. I mean, CB is also just hilariously strong anyway because of the whole sharpshooter 2 infinite range thing going on there. Oh yeah, there's no... Yeah, you're definitely not taking this over CB. Yeah. Bombardment, that is. Um, all right. So we'll do. Do you guys want to say anything more about these two, or at some point once they come out, I guess two months from now, we'll we'll do a a more thorough um, analysis on them. But okay. Um, I just hope they release Ewoks so I can play a three PO Ewok list because <laughs> I would I think I'd enjoy converting three PO to be on a on a wooden throne of some sort. That'd be neat. <laughs> Bow to your golden I god. How many people would quit the game as opposed to how many people would like start playing the game if that happened i would i would love ewoks i think that would be hilarious yeah you got to run commander luke and then like some point during the game you got to say through pio yeah. <laughs> tell them if they don't let us go you'll use your magic <laughs> point, yeah. Right? yeah yeah well like, yeah technically yeah. Hey. green saber and all yeah Yeah, I would. I would love Ewoks. I think that would be hilarious. Little murder, yeah. little murder bears with Give them pointy like... sticks. Hey, man, the droids have their chaff unit. I need my chaff unit. Thirty point Ewok squads <laughs> running around with. Yep. <laughs> yeah, just tar pitting, <laughs> going up to fifteen activations and actually being legitimate. I feel like they'd be like a special forces unit. Oh you know, God! <laughs> like they'd have like infiltrate, and uh, I mean their their attacks would be garbage. I, I mean. Unless they're attacking an ATST, which they would just auto kill. They, they probably get like um, sticks mm -hmm. is their melee attack, right? Yeah. And they have stone, yeah, sticks with like courage like zero. Range two white, no surge. Yeah, and like bows yeah. and arrows. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as they get suppressed, they panic. <laughs> <laughs> courage zero. <laughs> yeah, courage zero. Yeah. As soon as they take any fire, they run away. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you so you have to ambush from behind line of sight blocking terrain. Yeah, there you go. It's thematic. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. All right, um, yeah. enough about Ewoks. Uh, come on, uh, never enough. Chief Chirpa Commander when? So we also got a skirmish format, which we're not going to talk super much about on this show because Jay and Evan are going to talk about it on the Fifth Trooper, which you should also listen to. Oh, and also they did a battle report uh, with the new skirmish mode last week which is up on our youtube channel so check that out um yep all right let's dive into hot take Peter is way higher than everything else like tauntauns leia's two pip polishes many a turn it's not like you can just delete luke and put into tauntauns and that's a net game necessarily you know it'll be the salt city because i'll be there they dang still it hit kyle like already... i'm gonna sell you on fire support with mortars so and many aim 40... tokens we can't say it on the radio yeah, i think i think <laughs> come at me bro that's a lot to unpack maybe we should just burn the whole suitcase instead Thoughts, jay yep uh the same <laughs> nothing but the best best analysis right here folks yeah all right, Mike, this one's yours. It is mine. So. And since David has some sweet Operative Luke command cards, we're going to talk about Serve Your Master Well. Oh, yes. Yeah. My favorite. So this is a one-time effect that allows you to pull the strings as a free action, I might add on one of your units or one of your enemy's units if you have suppressed them i think is the language is it suppressed yeah correct and i believe it targets non-operative non-commander because yeah, if it did units. it would be even more bonkers but that's besides the point <laughs> yeah yeah i'm gonna mind trick grievous and force him to attack your own guys yeah i mean Seems I would, good. <laughs> so here's my problem with this card um 
It is incredibly uninteractive. Your opponent can basically do nothing to stop you from getting Luke into range of, say, your Death Trooper unit. Auto-suppressing it with Jedi Mind Trick, and then having your Death Troopers turn around and shoot anything in your army that's out of cover. Generally speaking, um, the units in your army are not in cover against other units in your army, just because that's kind of the nature of the beast. Um, it's very difficult to put yourself in cover against your opponent and against yourself. Um, I think they've been... So is the hot take here that it's overpowered as, as all that get is, out? That is how I feel about it. Yes. Um, you know, I think Luke being able to mix it up in in melee and then have a unit just like turn around and shoot its buddy um is way too powerful this card is way better than son of skywalker it's also way more flexible than son of skywalker um the 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 mode on this card where you pull the strings on like your own unit um is okay um but like um, it's definitely on like the kind of the floor but it's still not bad you know um i just i think the power level of this card is way too high and it is extremely uninteractive mm. um you can't really play around this card much it's generally a um what do you call it uh like an it's it's like an intro card in that you're using it to enter the fray, right? So like things like deploy the uh, garrison, yeah. like don't even do a ton here because you're like, oh, um, I'm gonna Jedi mind trick your dudes with a standby, and then instead of you shooting me, <laughs> you're gonna shoot you. Yeah, I mean it depends on terrain and stuff, right? Because it's range one and mind trick is range two, so um, in that right. situation. Unless you're behind a line of sight blocker, you're not going to be able to pull the standby. But well, you got to be inside range two yeah, to start and, the turn. I think that right. you can generally navigate that. Like if you're playing against Krennic, you you know how this is going to work out, and you can you can arrange a situation where you've either baited deploy the garrison out of them ahead of time, or you have um, you know set it up so that you don't need to worry about it. Um, it's very easy, like if you're within side range too, you're just like, okay, Jedi mind trick that dude, he's gonna shoot the dude with the other standby token, bing bang boom, like you know right know. right, so so I mean I can I can go with you on the fact that like once the interaction starts, it's too late right, once the once the card begins, sure. it's too late to do anything about it there's very little you can do to stop it at that point. Um, now, there are some ways to beat it timing-wise. Like, it feels like you have to beat it timing-wise to get around it somehow. Um, it doesn't apply to Empire, but Rebel on Rebel, you can no time units away from range. Something you can do. You, you know that Luke only has a certain amount of range to actually get the effect going. So then he'll have to change his order of operations. It is hard to deny it, though, if Luke has a unit near him. Like, if he just runs a unit next to him, he'll always get that pull, which is awesome. Right? Like it, And it kind of should be, because it's a one pip on a 200-point unit. Well, or a 160-point um, unit. I mean... I, well, all, depend, yeah, all things are here. That's the, fair. Like, this is a, a one pip ability on a unit that already has an incredibly good one pip ability. Um... Yeah, it's it's right. It's it's, it's, stacks it's up. an excellent kit for a unit that already has a really yeah. Good this is kit. just it's like and it's an excellent tool. You're, you're and, yeah. piling. I, to be fair, I don't think the new two and three pip operative Luke cards are. I mean, they're fine. I am a Jedi is pretty good in the scenarios where it's good. I don't. I don't I, think that's broke. I'm. I'm. I'm... <laughs> I'm grinning. I'm grinning a little bit because it's like you talk about an uninteractive card. <laughs> 
It's like, oh, you started the turn at range one of me? Oh, none of us yeah, get to do anything. Like, yeah, a, it's a really high cost, it, though. And it's a telegraphed move. Right? Yeah. Like, if you start the turn within range one yeah. of Luke Skywalker, you need to know that you can't play and now you'll die. Like, that's not a thing you can do. Yeah, you just can't because you're he's going to play right. I Am a so Jedi. So you have to, you know, fashion your turn in such a way that, like, you go last with Palpatine and then force push Luke farther than range one of you at the end of your turn so that you can and now you will die without, you know, fear of I Am a Jedi. There's, like, there's counterplay to that. There is very little counterplay to this monster one-pip card that turns your opponent's best units into things that get to shoot at them. Yeah, I mean, what I'm what I'm looking forward to the most off this card actually is not um, the mind trick pull on an opponent's unit. It's actually just pulling a tauntaun. I mean, that's all very good. <laughs> because now I get an extra, I get an extra charge. Like that's crazy, right? Because there's some situations that I that I met where it's like, oh, I have a seven dice charge I with mean- ram. So now I'm going to pull and ram, and then during my turn, I'll ram again. I would feel very different about this card. You know, so maybe I can get like four. Action. <laughs> yeah, if it actually costs an action, that, that, that's the that's the kicker, right? Because if, if Luke didn't have the ability to have his full turn in addition to yeah, this card. It's, it's silly. I don't, I don't know. It's like, oh, I'm Luke Skywalker, so I, I'm going to take this like range four pot shot with one of your units. It's something range four away. And I'm going to kill all the stuff next to me. Like normal. Um, I don't know. Like, well, that said he can't, he can't aim his lightsaber that turn. Usually, um, aim is pretty good on Luke saber. I've, I've come to understand after playing him for quite a while, his saber does whiff. Um, it's hard to whiff on the new one. You basically think of it like a rotary cannon with Pierce after a while. It's hard to whiff on that new saber with eight dice. It, on the new saber, but then we can't also say, well, it's on a 160-point unit and then talk about the new saber in the next sentence, well, right? I, mean, like, I, think, I think it's you know, the new saber. both of them, frankly. Like, like fair, if you compare 200-point yeah. like, Luke to 200-point Palpatine, like, don't get me wrong, Palpatine's good, but like, it's not close. I mean, man, like Krennic Shores get everything for free, so I mean, why not? Why not Rebels? Also, there is you do have to ask, still buy uh, a commander with Operative Luke. You don't have to do that. With sure. Palpatine. I just like uh, right. So, so Luke, so Luke gets this for two hundred and seventy yeah, points in I practice. Like, you know, if you're comparing points if values of units, right? You're taking one two hundred point unit and comparing it to another, like. Like Operative Luke makes Commander Vader, even with the new cards and Palpatine, just look like all right. You know, I think Dooku sort of comes close, but it's still not really a comparison. I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't actually agree about Palpatine, but that's not what this hot take is about. No, so. it's not. I, I just. Um, I think this card is busted. I think this card alone is worth like, like if command cards had points values, this card would be forty to fifty points. Like. It's bonkers. Well, that's a good that's a good um, comparison, right? Because the value shifts depending on what you manage to yeah, hit totally. with it, totally. right? Like if I'm if I'm pulling a sniper and killing a unit leader, like that's huge. If I'm pulling a tauntaun and ramming for seven hits, that's huge. If I can only pull like a Z six and it craps out, then it's like, well, I guess that didn't work yeah, out. I mean, like, you need to make good decisions. Yeah, it's well, it's it's a right. very variable card. I've I've had I've done some crazy things with this card. I've done some not so crazy things with it. Um, but yes, I agree that the particular situation that you're describing, which is Luke is already stuck in or close to it, um, you know, you take a unit of death troopers or like a unit of shore troopers that has an aim, um, and you turn around and gun and gun down something else. That is a very uninteractive situation. Yeah, and and frankly, it feels terrible. Like, like yep. uninteractivity, coolness of the card aside, like to have your own unit shoot at you, um, and like absolutely destroy your game plan, uh, feels horrible. Yep, that I agree with. Um, it's you know, it's it's something that 
I think I think it actually, like I am a Jedi, it does telegraph itself a little bit. There are some things you can do, like in in my Invader game last week with uh, Larry the Lobster. Um, I played it on a turn when Luke was stuck in, and there was one shore unit nearby, um, and he basically played Voracious Ambition and then immediately fired with that shore unit to strip the aim and the search from him so that I couldn't use it. Um, and then I pulled, you know, I, I used serve on him, but I think I actually don't think they even caused any wounds because I didn't have any tokens to use and my rollout was bad. So, you know, that can happen, right? That's like a way to deal with it. But yes, I agree that um, it's generally, a, at least in that particular use of it, a pretty interactive card. I had a similar situation against R1 where he was trying to serve my Tauntauns and I used no time to make sure my Tauntauns were facing directly away from the direction that he wanted to potentially move them in so that he actually had to settle for doing something else because the Tauntauns couldn't actually do the strong thing he had originally intended for them. I mean, there is there is a little bit of counterplay, but it's almost 100% positional. Mm -hmm. And I was also going to talk about standby. It's like... um. DT should probably be bringing Overwatch anyway. Well, and like any unit that's going to stand by should have Overwatch. I think yeah, it's I mean, somewhere. Yeah, like eight points that those lists generally can't afford. Yeah, it's just that range three standby is so potent. Like oh, it's, it's unbelievably really potent. Generally, I mean it, it. I mean it's still only good if it's yeah. free. Gener generally, which which it is fair. Sure. Yeah, good. absolutely. But I, yeah. I just I wanted yeah. to make sure that we caveated that. Like, yeah. You know, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not saying that there's no counterplay to this card, but it's it's narrow. It's, it's a really good card. Yeah, I mean, there's no question. It's like it, if you had to rate command cards, like, like you said, man, like it's, it's really good. It's definitely best like the one. top five. Uh, I don't know. I think now you die is better as far as one pips are concerned. Nah, man. But one and now you will die says Palpatine goes to one wound. This this is yeah, but you also kill like five units. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, you just win the game. I, I that has not been my experience with a Now You'll Die. I, have had yeah, I know that of... I don't have a lot of games with Palpatine. but <laughs> All I'm saying is that I have had my opponent go off with a Now You'll Die mm, at least 50% of the time and still lost the game. Like, it's... I, don't, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a good card. But, like, you have to give up almost 200 points of resources to make it happen. Like, you're giving up your key piece when you use that card. Yeah, I mean, if you time it correctly, there's your opponent's not gonna have anything left to finish off Palpatine with. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I I think I think that is a card you can play around way more than than serve your master well. Uh, I don't know about that. Yes and no. It comes down to a priority role and and how you've dispositioned your army. Like that's that's the majority of, of what we're seeing here is the counterplay is in the positional the position. It's not in the you know, once the once the interaction starts, what I mean, can I do to blunt it? Position. This game is all positioning. Yeah. Basically. It's all like, yeah, I mean you know, right. I mean um Yep, accurate. Like Sure. Well if you take that as a given then yeah. But I mean you gotta start there. Anyways, I think this card's too yep, good. It's a good card. I think it should be banned. Oof. <laughs> I, I mean, you want to talk about uninteractive? Let's talk about line, line, and, line weight. and weight. Is fun, <laughs> and I, you know, I get you've had bad experiences with it. Um, nobody, nobody even plays boss I'm, right now. I'm, I'm, I'm trying I'm PTSD. No, it's funny because all weekend I was I was hitting five crit rolls on rotary cannons. Yeah, so yeah, you know, there you and go. I feel I feel good the about that. Proliferation of you know crit generally. It's just it's whatever. I, I'm, lying, lying in wait was a lot better three months ago than it is now. It's it's just as good. It's fair today as it was three months ago. People just are like not high on Bosk right now. I don't know why that is. Frankly, I think he's still just as good, if not better, today than he was three months ago. But that's another conversation. I mean, yeah, I we'll see how lists evolve over the next few months, but I think that. The general view right now is he messes messes up your short trooper game if you take him. I don't know if that's actually true, but that's at least the view. I mean, like there are ways to deal with that. Mm. Yeah, I know. And we've discussed various ones on yeah. 
uh, at previous times in the past. But um, we should try and make an episode without talking about short troopers or tauntauns. So that's, that's not um, going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it will never. It will never happen. It uh, will never happen. Do you guys? Want- Especially because LVO now things are delayed for LVO. So yeah, LVO is going to be the, the meta. There's a strong chance that the current meta is the I mean, meta. It, for at LVO. a bare minimum, the meta at LVO is going to be experimental. Like th- this is the meta that we are going to have going into it. This is going to be the expected meta we're going to have going into it. Whether that ends up right. being the case we're or gonna... not due to releases remains to be seen. Yep. It's hard to say. Yeah. All right. You guys want to talk about Dooku? Sure. Another 205 point unit that's not operative loot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh. All right. Let's uh, let's hit Legion 101. It's time for Legion 101. Class is in session. All right. So Count Dooku is unlike pretty much everything we've else we've talked about so far on the show actually out um <laughs> and released to the general public <laughs> although i don't have him yet still even though i pre-ordered him so i have um, he's great i actually like the sculpt so oh i know I he's great more in person than i did like when i saw the preview i saw the preview and i was like eh i don't know this is the and then i got it and i like picked it up and looked at it it's actually pretty good i really like it um it just it felt vanilla when i was looking at it in the pictures and I, there's actually it's got some nice flavor to it. Yeah, I mean that's Dooku, right? Simple but refined. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dooku's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I think he's probably the second best force user in the game. Behind Palpatine? No, not behind Palpatine. <laughs> not behind Palpatine. No. In fact, I think Dooku eats Palpatine for breakfast. I think Dooku eats most Force users. For yeah, breakfast. I mean he eats he uses most units for yeah. breakfast, right? But like, if you're talking about a now you will die counters, like here you go, here oh, you yeah. go, yeah. right? Um, yeah, he's a he's a Sith with cunning. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you, if you newsflash, yeah. audience! If you haven't if you haven't played as one pip yet, it's real good. <laughs> um, oh, all those cards are real good. Yeah. All right, let's let's go through. It. Okay, let's. Yeah, yeah. So this is a Legion 101. So let's go through the full Dooku kit here. Um, I should probably bring up his cards. I'm not doing this from memory. That'd probably be helpful. <laughs> All right. So he's got the standard six L three courage, which seems to be uh, the lightsaber wielder yeah. template, if you will. It's like the baseline lightsaber wielder kind of thing yep. you do. Um. He's got five red dice in melee. Yep. Is he red yes. save, no surge? Yep. I mean, he's got deflect. Also, right. okay. That's... Yes, he has deflect. Okay, so he's like, he's like Luke levels of defense, which is sometimes godlike, sometimes horrible. Yep. So it's worthwhile, it's worthwhile to shoot him is basically what I'm Yeah, thinking. if he doesn't have a dodge token, you want to be shooting him. Yeah, shoot his ass. Because right. <laughs> he might All actually. Right, yeah. So he's got six health, three courage, red dice save. Um, surge crit uh, five red and melee impact two pierce two um, so it's essentially uh, Vader's saber with one last dice but with surge crit it's operative Vader's saber is what it is right it's yes exactly with surge crit yep. it's Chewbacca with tenacity but pierce which makes a big difference <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes a huge difference um, I mean his other special ability <laughs> is the kicker on that but yeah yeah so he, yeah. he also has right. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, he also has Force Lightning, which unlike Palpatine's is uh, slightly weaker and not melee, but it's range one to two, five black, Pierce one, uh, and it has Scatter, which is a new keyword. I is it um, actually? We- I mean, like, so it's weaker on Pierce, but it's like it's actually pretty comparable, I think, right? Uh, 20, it's um, it's half, it's 14, it's a little over half a hit less. It's five eighths less. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It still feels pretty good shooting someone with it because it's you know again good old good old five black surge crit something with such a very familiar dragon squad out of cover with it. Right. So what scatter yeah. essentially does is um, it's, it lets you do cohesion on your target yeah. after you die. 
Yeah, you can you can cohere a squad into force choke yeah. range. <laughs> so it's not it's not quite as good as like force push, but you can do this with a range two attack, so it has a much longer effective range. Yep. Um and then alright, so let's look at his keywords, because this is where the fun stuff is cunning. Which only previously was on Krennic. Which was really good a... on your ninety point do nothing unit. Yeah. <laughs> Krennic, who normally pisses on a wall yeah. and yells at people yep. and does nothing else. Um, <laughs> or stares through some yeah. binoculars. Uh, deflects, like most Force users. Um, he's got immune pierce, similar. Makashi Mastery. So this is a new keyword for Dooku. He can reduce the pierce value of his melee weapon to uh, negate pierce immune or impervious. The impervious bit is not on the reminder text, but that's in the RRG. Um, real good. <laughs> <laughs> this is why he murders four yeah. users in melee. Yeah. This plus cut. I mean, he's still, so he retains Pierce 1 when he does this. Um, right. So not only is he making you not immune to Pierce, I mean, I guess it wouldn't be relevant if he didn't retain his Pierce, but it's just, right. yeah, it's really good. It's super good. Yeah. 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 So it's he wins lightsaber duels yeah. most of the time. Use it, yeah. profit. Yeah, so let's say... Yep. Let's say he's dueling Luke, right? And Luke's got, you know, no dodge token. You know, let's assume for the sake of argument, Dooku goes five hits, reduces your reduces his pierce by one. Luke rolls the the upside of this, which is three blocks. Luke still just ate half his health. Yeah, I mean, so you know? I think it's actually interesting duel wise. This is probably like, um, The first hit from Dooku is generally not going to kill them, right? Because he only has he's st at the end of the day he still only has five. Yeah, dice. I mean, like high probability you roll out mm -hmm. five hits, um, but you're probably not going to kill him with the first hit. So when you're dueling somebody with Dooku, you need to keep that in mind that you're going to probably have to soak an attack anyways. So maybe or or damage him first. Yeah, I mean, like, you're going to have to soak an attack. Yeah. In, unless you've, yeah, damaged them first. But even with Pierce 1, they've got 5 health. Like, you're not, you shouldn't kill them outright. No. Yeah, you won't. No, that, that's true unless you last first. Yes. Because then you have, then you're just boom, that's boom, and then they're dead. <laughs> before it's they can react to you. you can do, because he has cunning. <laughs> yes. The first part is the easy part. The hard part is the last part, because... As I'm sure our viewers are yeah, noting at this point, he does not have a keyword that says relentless or charge. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's that's a big so limiting factor. His his last keyword there is master the force two, which is of course great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not present charge or relentless. So. So so knowing that it's probably easier to enter melee with a multiple miniature unit because you are able to scatter them toward you and then walk into well, melee. I think this is maybe a good time to walk through his command cards because I think his three pip and his one pip specifically um, <clears throat> are pretty much the last verse we're talking about. Um, right. I mean, they, they, they chain into each other very well. Yeah, so let's go in descending order here. All right, so the three pip, which is you disappoint me. Um, and that's Count Dooku in two units. When Count Dooku issues an order to a unit, that unit gains one dodge token. So that's obviously great. After Count Dooku performs a ranged attack against the trooper unit, he may perform a speed to move with that unit. So this is my ally with the force plus... The bonus speed two move on your target. <laughs> Basically. Plus it's an extra unit. Woof. Yeah, right. Two units. Yeah, count Dooku in two units. Yeah. yeah. So um yeah, it's it's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uses for this, besides handing out free dodge tokens to things, which is always good. Especially on saber wielders like Dooku. Mm -hmm. Um you can a speed two move is far. And when you do moves with opposing units you get to also cohere them so a speed two move with a trooper unit is roughly six inches which is range one slightly less than that yep. and then cohesion is roughly four inches so you can essentially reposition a unit 10 inches closer to you with this card and then force push them 
because you're going to have that upgrade. Right. <laughs> and, <then> force, but... <laughs> yeah. and get it back because two. you have Master right. of Force. Two. So now yeah, Master so you of can Force get back. two. So you can push choke yeah, so you're every gonna, turn. You're going to grip this guy to you after hitting them with lightning. You're going to choke him, and then you're going to, you know, get it force all back. pushing them closer. Yeah. Yeah, it's... and then get all of it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. It's so good. Yeah, so this is like your setup card. Yeah. Right. Um, you. You know, if d depending on so positioning with all force users is super important, especially slower ones like Dooku. Um, you probably want this to be a last card, yep. unless you can do it safely and have him be first. Um, but range two lightning is still not super far. That's a pretty dangerous engagement range. So you don't want to like walk Dooku out into the middle of your opponent's army. You know, do your cute move thing, choke somebody out, and then get fired upon by the, your entire opponent's army. That's not good. That was the first thing I did. <laughs> well, I say that because that's the first thing everybody. That's the first thing I did when I used this card. Yeah, I mean, um, this this yeah. is notable if you're comparing effective ranges. That this card's range is only two inches more than Palpatine's range, just to put it in perspective. Right. It's actually, it's actually shorter because Palpatine can get two speed one moves before he does his thing. I'm talking just like Palpatine on a normal turn. Oh yeah, Palpatine's normal attack. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so not super far is the point. Yeah. Um, this is also great for, you know, it's an extra force push, basically, except at speed two. So if you need to, like, move a unit off an objective or something like that, you can also use this for that. Yeah, imagine resetting someone on breakthrough like that. Yeah. That's I mean, just it's painful. also good, like, if somebody, like, jumps in the middle to grab the box, like, hey, you messed up, buddy. Yeah, thanks for <laughs> thanks for delivering me that box. <laughs> Yeah, now I'm gonna drag it toward me and then kill <laughs> yeah. you. Get over here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's Scorpion. Scorpion yep. the Mortal That's Kombat. what this is, basically. That's good. All right, double the fall. Um, Count Dooku and one unit. Before we Sorry. move on, I would just like yeah. I know that we're talking about this card as an entry into combat. It is worth noting that Dooku can use this card to also push a unit like Luke or Vader out of engagement range with him like yep. beyond where next turn they can move move attack um which is a big deal it's a huge deal but now it is important that this card unlike force push does not say that the unit may move while engaged yeah um so unlike force push you cannot use this to actually disengage a unit from anything um you know, it's like no time for sorrows, which you also cannot use for that purpose. But but you can yeah, if they're like on the edge of your engagement range, yeah, you can just push them away with this. Yeah, and you can you can always just like, you know, if if you're like mixing it up and you guys aren't fighting each other, you can force push them, light jazz hands them, you know, speed to move them and then move away. Like yep, yeah, it's a huge control card yeah. for sure. Yeah, we just talked about how everything in this game is about positioning. So, yeah, big deal. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's really good at screwing things up for you yeah. that way. So, in addition to positioning screwing you up, he also screws with your order tokens. Uh, yeah. And specifically, face up order tokens yeah. with this next card. Yeah. Right. So, speaking of pushing things out of melee into you know range of your army, this is yeah. really good for well, that. Yeah. So, double the fall is the card. Um, Count Dooku in a unit. At the start of activation phase, if Count Dooku has a face-up order token, which he should because, um, well, I guess you could use Batman and get around this, but yeah, if he has face-up order token, he may return it to his order pool to choose up to two enemy units at range one to two and return their order tokens to their order pool. Yeah, so um, it's worth noting that there's no, generally speaking, no downside to this card because the only thing that's going to be in your bag is gonna be like Droidekas and Dooku. It's you're right. It depends on how you build your list. Um, if you're running Grievous, Dooku, and six B ones, then the only thing in your bag is gonna be commander tokens. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, returning Dooku's token to the bag, uh, no downside whatsoever. Yeah. Um, if you're running like Dooku, a bunch of B ones, and a couple Droidekas, then he'll probably be in your bag with two Droidekas or one Droidika. Yeah. And then, I mean, whatever. Let's maybe save let's... an uplink for this turn so that the only thing that goes into your bag is Dooku. 
Yeah. You know. Um, Point is, you can easily manage the downside of this card, which is flipping Dooku's token into your bag. Yep. You can often just flip it straight into an empty bag. Mm -hmm. Your opponent, yeah. not so much. <laughs> right. Well, it's worth noting that it's not great in a mirror match. Um, well, I kind of disagree. It depends on what you're targeting because you can force your opponent to trigger AI if you go after B1s with this. Sure, I guess well, what I'm trying to say is it's not it's not good in like a Dooku on CIS, you know, character mirror match type situation. Right. Um, and like B1s triggering AI is fine. It's not like the end of the world generally. Yeah, it depends on how your opponent, like if you're playing CIS against CIS, if your opponent, how they set everything up. Yeah. It could actually really mess them up depending on how they set their bag up. Um, like if you're actually, if you're playing against another, like a Grievous Dooku 6B1 player, you know, in that list setup, you can actually, so this is worth discussing because this is a tactic you can do with Dooku if you're running that list. You can use Dooku's cards to win priority for Grievous. Yeah. Like even as one pip, it only gives an order to Dooku. You uplink your B1s, and then Grievous is your only token in the bag. Mm -hmm. So, like in that situation, if you play double the fall and you throw two core tokens in that bag with Grievous, then suddenly he can't use, you know, uh, his one pip to win priority for Grievous if he needs to do that. But you still probably pull out of the bag at that point. Yeah, I mean, probably. But the point is, like, muddying a CIS player's bag is still important, potentially. Yeah. Um, this is definitely just, I don't know. A again, any any dual situation, this card is pretty pretty busted. Like, <clears throat> oh, you're going to, now you will die this turn? That's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you'll, you'll, you'll do it, when do it I whenever you so. manage to pull Palpatine right, out of your right? token bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that was good out. luck. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile, I'm going <laughs> to, meanwhile, I'm going to cost you for half your yeah. wounds. Oh yeah, Son of Skywalker. Yeah, you're gonna nice. do that whenever you fish fish Luke out of your bag. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. it's real good. It's it's good against Tauntauns too, who often are relying on that order control. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's a really good like defensive card. It's a really good dual card slash defensive card. Yeah. Um. All right, let's hit his one pip here real quick. Fear, surprise, intimidation. Just. Quick aside about this card, I was trying to find where this quote occurs, and actually it's from the Clone Wars cartoon by it, Genndy Tartakovsky. Yes, it's from the or it's from I think the first what does he episode. Say? He literally says fear, surprise, intimidation when he's talking to Grievous about how hmm. to beat the Jedi. I mean that's what this card does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, you know. I know that like I totally like ran a train on saying that serve your master well is like really broken blah 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 blah. this card is bust it's it's good it's real good <laughs> um is this the one where the card art is him chopping off anakin's arm it is yeah yes um so yeah it's uh count dooku gains arsenal two and relentless um each of those ranged weapons gains versatile after he performs an attack the defender gains two suppression tokens yeah, so, <laughs> I mean, there's lots of good things about this card. The first is that it's a one pip with cunning on a Sith. I mean, this card could, as far as I'm concerned, this could have been a card, this could have been Ambush, Count Dooku, and it would have been good. Yeah. Um. This is, uh... so it, it gives him the Relentless keyword for a turn, which is what he is really wanting generally um which is obnoxious uh gives him arsenal two so he gets to swing his lightsaber and lightning something worth noting that if you want to be a little bit more um conservative play wise you can equip him with saber throw and uh throw his lightsaber and jazz hand something if two different targets are the same target um yeah, I could see that. I, I feel like personally, that's a little bit of a waste of a four slot. I agree for for agree. one use, um, but I could see it. You know, yeah, it's uh, and so, but if you do that, you're handing out six suppression tokens if you choose two different targets. Yeah, like right. 
Like, Which is crazy if, cool. If you hit Luke Skywalker with this, if he's not an operative, he's just suppressed. Yeah, because it's you get it's three, three suppression tokens: one from the ranged attack, and then one, two from this card. Yeah, so it's like oh, so you you're you're definitely going to suppress one unit that you're not in melee with presently, and there's a decent likelihood that you suppress whatever you're in melee with, anyways. Yep, because they also get two suppression tokens. Yeah. This was this was my favorite Spanish translation, by the way. Somebody <laughs> when those Spanish cards came out, somebody typed this into Google Translate, and it said something like, um, "When Count Dooku performs a touch, the defender ga- uh, gains two cows." Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, yeah, but yeah, not cows. They are suppression tokens. Um, and yeah, notably, he also gains versatile. So if he's in melee with something, he can lightning out of melee to attack another target, just like Greaves is gone Boy. um yeah uh, and these commanders with arsenal like an arsenal out of melee man they're just on another yeah, so level it's, i mean you're like if you're stuck in with this card in, in your opponent's army and you use it there's a good chance that you just gut or wipe two units with it yeah basically you know what i don't get and this is i'm just gonna grieve here for a second like general grievous has versatile but boba fett does not like what Well, I mean, Count. I mean, they probably had Count the, Dooku gets versatile, but Boba on. Fett does not. Like, I don't know. Oh, Boba Fett doesn't use a lightsaber. You know. Well, it's not about a lightsaber. It's about you're in melee with something, and you're really good with a blaster. Like, I don't know. Boba Fett got beat by a blind Han Solo <laughs> with a pole. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Accurate. Yeah, suck it, all you Boba <laughs> Fett fans. <laughs> Accurate. Um, all right. Yikes. <laughs> so yeah, back to Count Dooku. Um, yeah, it's just, <laughs> I mean, this is a really good kill stuff card. It is. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, I think a lot of the text on this card. I mean, the most important one is Arsenal Two and Versatile. I think Relentless is like you're going to maybe use it like 50% of the time. I think a lot of the times you're already kind of stuck in and in melee with something. Yeah, it depends on where you are. Um, but it's worth noting that like if you are in melee with something, you like choke whatever's left and then force push them out and then double move into something else. Kill that and lightning. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's you, can, you can very conceivably destroy three units on one turn with this card. Yep, absolutely. It's it's interesting. Duke is kind of like a a hybrid of Vader and Palpatine, right? Yeah, like, yeah, that's that's fair. Um, I'd say he leans more towards Palpatine than Vader, probably. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, and and the cunning just uh, changes the game. Yeah, it's real good. So all good. right, let's talk about his upgrade slots real quick. So he's got three four slots and a command slot. Yep. What uh, what upgrades are you taking on him? Let's talk about force upgrades first. Well, you're choke. you're taking choke push. Yeah, at, at least. With that being said, I have found in my experiences with Operative Vader on TTS that push is actually a little bit less necessary. Um, generally speaking. Like sixty to eighty percent of the time, choke is enough for you to disengage with another unit. In that you've moved, moved mm-hmm. relentless into it, thrown five dice, pierce three. Double choke is enough to finish that unit most of the time. Yeah, um, but pushes for a lot more than just disengage. I agree. I, I'm like, uh, but I think that if I think units with with choke specifically, if you want to f- forego push, it's more reasonable on these units than units that don't have access to choke. I still yep, think it's I pretty agree. mandatory. Yep, I agree. Um, I just I know that there's people out there that are gonna be like, I don't want to take force push. You t- first of all, take it. Second of all, if if you don't take it, at least use that reasoning. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so then if you're so I agree, first two slots 
staple force push and choke to him. Yep. Uh, what do you think you put in that third slot? I, th I mean, I think mm. it's reflexes, and I don't think it's particularly close. Yeah. Yeah, on a character with a, a no defense surge that's so valuable, I think reflexes is it. Like, you want access to dodge tokens he's all the time. He's also not particularly, you know, I mean, he's speed two, but he doesn't have charge of relentless and he doesn't have jump. So, he, for a lightsaber wielder, he's effectively slow. So he's not going to be able to like hide on top of yes. buildings or behind things like Luke yeah. is going to be able to, or Obi Wan. Um, so you're going to need that dodge token because there's going to be more situations where he's, you know, a little, a little bit more exposed than like a more mobile force user is going to be. Yeah, there's just he's very uh he's very lawful evil in that sense. He's like you know just come and fight me like a man. <laughs> <laughs> you know? He's he's a he's like a death guard. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's lawful evil. That's good. Much. Yeah, I like it. I mean, I think yeah. I think it's reflexes, but I I think it's because most of the other available force upgrades are not super competitive. Like we've got battle meditation, which is sort of niche, but like not great in CIS generally because you already have complete order control. Um, you have force guidance, which in Dooku's case is just like strictly worse than a dodge token. Um, saber throw, like maybe not strictly worse than the lightning that's attached to his card, but like you probably don't need to take it. Um, and fear is like fine. It's just not super powerful. It's like a, it's like an upgrade you take when you've got an extra three points in an open force slot lying around. Like, yep. Um, I can see a situation where you don't want to fork out the seven extra points for reflexes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if you're tight on points, I could see fear going in that slot. Um, yep. But overall, I think that if you have the points for force reflexes, especially now that it's 10 points instead of 15, um, you know, I, I think you take reflexes if you can afford it. I agree. That's how I usually build them. Push joke reflexes. Yeah. I think the the next slot is actually we're gonna have a constructive argument about it. I have. I, I think that I think there's a lot of interesting uh, options there. I do too. Okay. So I think it depends on whether you're running him with Grievous or by himself. Mm -hmm. I think if you're running him with Grievous, it's a steamed leader, and it's not particularly close. That's not even in the running in my list. Really? Yep. I'll explain why in a sec, but continue. Okay. I mean, at least my so my my rationale there with Grievous is um, you're not going to be triggering aggressive tactics with two commanders every turn. Mm -hmm. um, he's your most important piece in that list. B ones are great esteemed leader targets because they're six points. You don't need strict orders because he's got courage three, which means that suppression does literally nothing to your droids until they get to six. Um. So, that's where I disagree. I think okay. I think strict order is a staple to him. Okay, go on. Um, I think it is not five points strip suppression off everything else. It is five points strip of suppression token off Count Dooku when you need to. And th this is a this is a unit that absolutely falls apart if it's suppressed. Yeah, if he's got one action, he's totally effed. Like, he's just, he's at least Palpatine could pull the strings. Right? Like, and 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 get an attack out of the situation. And and it, it's very hard to suppress Palpatine, generally. Um, but with, I mean, like, I've suppressed Luke before. It's not that hard to do. Like, you can, you can make it happen. But the fact that he has moved charge makes up a lot for that yep dooku does not have access to that ability and i think that strict orders is it's just that it's an insurance policy against you know you're you're generally going to have a face-up order token on count dooku if he's in your army generally so when i mean so if you're running dooku grievous grievous has two command slots yep um, I think you put strict on Grievous, and then you put esteemed on Dooku. I, I mean, we're talking about Dooku Grievous. I don't think it's particularly good. I'm not. 
I mean, it's it's yeah, it's super fun. It's only eight activations. Yeah, which isn't great. I, um, I would like it to be good. I think that like we need a cheaper alternative than like droid echoes for a list like that to work. Like, like if you can, if you yeah. can somehow find a way to get us a, a, a Duke of Grievous list up to nine or 10 activations, I think this conversation becomes very different. I agree. Um, but I think as it stands, um, you know, you have eight activations and your two most powerful units want to want to be able to go and not be shot at. Um, yeah, going last first with both of those characters is very important. Yeah, um, it's not impossible. I'm sure it's you know, if if your opponent screws up, you can make it work. But I think that against most good ten to eleven activation lists that people are running nowadays, that's going to be tough. Um, yep. So so I'm when I'm talking about Dooku's command slot, I'm operating under the assumption that it's the only command slot in your army. Okay, so if we're talking about solo Dooku. Um, I definitely can see the argument for strict. I personally like aggressive tactics just because I like surges on B ones and on Droidicas. Um, yeah. And I haven't, I haven't personally like had an issue with Dooku being suppressed. Uh, now that said, uh, if you're facing like a su- Krennic suppression gun line, um, that's really not hard to do. No. So um, it's also, you know, like strict on a courage three unit, you do have, if you're just rolling stuff off, you have a little bit more than seventy percent chance to get at least one paint there. Um, but you know, maybe thirty percent chance to not get one paint is is uh, just too high for you, which I, I mean, can totally understand. In a lot so. of situations, losing an action on Dooku on a critical turn is equal to losing the game. Yep. Yeah, totally. It's restricted as an is a insurance policy, yeah. a very important insurance policy. All right. Uh, so just as far as builds, we already talked about Duke of Grievous, but that's basically Duke of Grievous 6B1s. Um, there's not a lot of options right now. I think the other one is Duke 6B1s, two Jordicas. Oh, yeah. I think, I think that's a probably a much better starting point at this point. Yep. I agree. Um, that's my favorite build for Duke personally. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool to have Grievous and Duke in, it's, it's much more doable than Vader Palpatine. Ever, oh, yeah. No, ever no, was. No. Like, yeah. You know, which is which is cool is all get out. Um, you know, you can definitely take Duke of Grievous and go to a casual store event and be like, okay, like I can I can win a couple games with this. Um, yep. But you know, uh, so in that I think it's great. All right, um, I think that's enough about Duku. Should we talk about uh, Invader real quick? <laughs> And your your statistical Z six probabilities. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Luke. I just want yeah. you to know if you're listening, I empathize with you. I don't, I I don't, I don't think that's. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's why uh, that game went the way that it did. But uh, it doesn't it matter, man. A turning point. Remember, we were talking about like you yep. jumping off buildings as Rubbins the other week. This is the same deal. You're like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll my Z six roll and I'm gonna roll out eight hits, Rubbins. <laughs> Kyle, you don't was, need to win more. Yeah, yeah. So I uh, I spend all week bashing Z6s. Yeah. And then on back-to-back yes. Z6 rolls, I you get eight hits and then seven hits on and top yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it, was, it was silly. And it was like... Yeah, right he was like, another, the like game, a flow was like, a full no, health unit of Tons, like, in, like getting ready to charge the next turn. And he's like, oh, I was like, oh, if he if he, if he gets the threat saturation, R two D two might get in the enemy deployment zone to win the game. And then it's like, oh, that just happened. <laughs> four crits, four hits off of Z six. Yep. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. When it was one of those moments. Uh, so I I I know Luke. We're um, we're good friends. We met at Adepticon last year, and. Uh, it was one of those moments. So it was a very like fun game, but it was one of those moments where there was just this moment of silence after that roll. And we were just both like, uh, <laughs> so that just happened. Not like this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, what did, what did you say the chances of that were? Uh, less than 1%. Oh Lord. Okay. And then I did it essentially again mm-hmm. on the next roll. <laughs> 
<laughs> like the chances of doing both of them are like significantly, significantly uh, so low. Uh, you know, I don't know. Oh no, Kyle's embellishing. It's not just less than one percent, my good friends. It's like, <laughs> it's like barely percent. over a tenth of one percent. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. very small. It's extremely very small. small. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was unlikely. It was an unlikely outcome. It was definitely the nail in the coffin in that game. That Very point, emphatic one. That point, your rebel troopers roll out more hits than a DT squad. Yep. <sighs> Rebels overpowered, man. <laughs> See, that's why I like the Z6. Clearly. Clearly. There's, there's Clearly. no world where a DT Rebels. squad gets eight hits at range three. Not <laughs> range three. Yeah, yeah, totally. totally, range totally range. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, but, yeah, no, I know. I spend the whole week bashing Z6s, or at least saying that I'm on board the naked train, and then they go ahead and do that for me. You're um, on board the naked train. That's <laughs> I think, interesting terminology. I think Jay already clipped that exact quote from last week. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how much more there is to say about that game. Luke, Luke played a good game. It was, um, you know, just a couple. A couple hot swings like that and uh there was also a moment where i think he like prematurely moved up a tauntaun unit that i pasted with luke and a z6 um so you also you won turn zero pretty handily that game yeah i think like 95 percent of legion games are yeah. turn zero 95 hmm. yeah i mean I that's kind of how i feel about it i don't know I've done some things, man. It's no, I know. Okay. Are, well, we, are we returning to the era of the 14 point bid? No, no, no. And I don't, I don't mean that blue player is necessarily critical to that either. I'm just saying. No. Well, yeah. the fastest way to win turn zero is to be blue. Yeah. It's definitely important. 95 is high. I'm just saying like, I think, I think most games, definitely more than half my games, um, I feel strongly one way or another after deployment. Yeah, Generally. I'll give you like okay, fair. sixty to seventy. Okay, yeah, all right. Ninety-five is a, a hyperbole, but yes. So, it's, sometimes it's your opponent rolls eight dice on a Z six, and, <laughs> and and deployment doesn't matter. You know. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was <sighs> it was evaporators. Tauntauns are not great on evaporators. Um, oh, hmm. So. Blue player, okay. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you really, I was you really think you really think that card was in Luke's battle deck? I don't know, it definitely was not. But that's why I took a six point bid. So, um, wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, I rest my case. Yeah. <laughs> bidding is important. I'm not bidding 14 points, but bidding is important. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a fun game. I'm sorry, Luke, that I crit faced you with Z sixes. It's hilarious to watch. <laughs> uh, you guys had fun casting that one, I bet. We did. <laughs> we did have great. We had great fun, and um, I'll continue to say all the nasty things you won't say about the way Luke played those tauntauns off the air. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yikes! Right. I thought I thought he did fine considering the. The turn zero position he was in. I um, just like your opinion, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I got to play another shoreline this Friday. Uh, this yeah, morning. we'll be so, uh, we'll be hitting the hitting the casting again for that as well. We might have uh, yeah, we'll, think, where Booth just keeps packing more people in. We might actually have four people doing it. Yeah, we oh, might really? get because uh because uh, Darkling Chris Hecht wants to uh to um cast that alongside and so does mike cirillo oh, so we're gonna have a bunch of uh, a bunch of people talking about how either we wish we were you or um uh get good kyle <laughs> <laughs> one of the one of those things one of those two things will happen depending on how you play so no pressure well i have confidence that my z6s are going to go back to hiding behind things all mm -hmm. game um against the shoreline so uh, Zero Moon's got not one, but two Death Troopers plus three Shore Troopers. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the same list I played in Team League. Mm -hmm. um, that's good. Yeah, it's like the yeah. Shoreline double, double DT. It's really good. Yep. Yep. 
yeah, it's it's a lot of DACA. Um, and Although, Dathomir is a reasonably open map, so we'll see. He may not have a medic in it. He has a medic. I think he has one, one yeah. medic. He has one medic, yeah. I think I found... I think I had two in mine, if I recall. I'm not sure. Yeah. But anyway, it's very close it's to your team. Very, list. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very close. Um, yeah. It's very good. It's a good list. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a good game. Zero Moon's a good player. Yeah. So um, I think is that the first top eight game on the schedule? I think so. I haven't seen any other ones. Okay. Kingsley still has not played his uh that's that's the last his computer, his computer is broken, is broken still. Yikes. Yeah. Anyway, um all right, that's invader update. Um do you wanna talk your attorney, David, or no, I think we can I think I've I think I've spoken about it already. I have spoken. Sweet command cards that aren't legal for like the next. Yeah, I, I I won some things. I I went to one. Uh, droids won it. Triple triple droidicas are good, yo. Um, yeah, droidicas are good. Yeah. What was it right. nine activation triple yes. droids? So some some naked or like two naked B ones or something probably. to make that happen. Yeah. Yep. All right. <clears throat> um. Cool. Well, we will uh, be talking some more interesting stuff next week. And um, we are the Notorious Scoundrels. I'm Kyle. I'm Mike. And I'm David. Forgot David. my name for a second there. <laughs> You're probably Jedi mind tricked into serving your master will. <laughs> hey. All right, we'll see you next week. Join us next week for another episode of The Notorious Scoundrels. This has been a Fifth Trooper production.